Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Mary Parish. We are so happy to have you with us this afternoon as we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Faith Formation is looking for a grade 14 helper and a grade 6 teacher. If you have any interest in these, you can contact the Faith Formation office. They'd be happy to hear from you. Also, join them on Sunday, September 15th for a presentation on Eucharistic Miracles by Tony Belize. It starts at 6 p.m. and it's inside St. Joseph's Church. The collaborative office is closed for Labor Day. The office will be returning to normal business hours. That's Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 5, Tuesdays and Fridays 9 to 3, and closed on Thursday. Save the date for St. Mary's Dinner Dance coming on September 20th at 6 o'clock. Tickets are $40 per person and are selling fast. You can purchase your ticket after Mass today. Our second, our parish monthly second collection is this weekend, the 30th and September 1st. This collection supports the special needs of the parish, including building maintenance, snow removal, heat, and utilities. As always, we thank you for your generous support of these second collections. We remember in a special way at this Mass, Ginger and Kevin Benassi. Our gathering hymn this afternoon, number 464, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Our celebrants, Father Jack and Deacon Paul Key. If you'll please stand. I heard the voice of Jesus. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather this evening to prepare ourselves once again to enter into the celebration, let us first pause and call to mind our own sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son. 
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear all of these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as the whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. Purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching is doctrine's human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come from out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, I had the, uh, the privilege of celebrating a funeral for a a very, very good man. He lived into his 90s. Uh, If you just happened to come into the church, you probably wouldn't notice him. 
He was quiet. He kept to himself. But if you got to know him, he, he was a, I don't know if holy is the right word, but he, he was definitely a man whose life was based on his love of God and his love of his faith. And, uh, and he had lived a long life, and he touched a lot of lives. And this gentleman probably spent more time praying than almost anyone I've ever met in my life. And he was kind, and he was just a good guy. And so he died, and I went to the wake. And I knew a little bit about his family, and I knew that not all of his kids were practicing the faith that he thought was so important to him. In fact, it was the thing that defined him, his being a Catholic. And I was, um, so I was speaking to his son-in-law at the wake, and the son-in-law starts to tell me about um, how when he first met this gentleman, he really wasn't a believer in God at all. He, he didn't go for all that stuff. But over time, having spent time with him and watching him, he began to have some stirrings of faith. And in fact, at one point, he, he grabbed his then son-in-law and dragged him off to a, a, a men's conference, a, really, a Catholic men's conference, for a weekend of prayer and all sorts of things. And he talks about how during that event, the son-in-law had a conversion. He had a, he had a, a mystical experience. His eyes were opened. And... Um, he became a believer, and he's a forever believer to this day. But the thing is, he's not a Catholic. He, uh, he started off as a Catholic, but uh, he ended up bouncing around to uh, four different Protestant churches. So like any good uh, person that's kind of left the church, you know what he finally did? He started his own church. That kind of, meet, it kind of met his needs, I think. And uh, when I said to him, because I'm thinking, the man that inspired him, if you asked him what his faith was, he wouldn't have said he was a Christian. He was a Christian. He would have said he was a Catholic. He was a Catholic to the marrow of his bones. And that's what made him into the person that he was. And he said to me, well, my problem with the church was there were just too many rules. In the first Protestant church, there were too many rules. And the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. So he went someplace, I suppose, where... I guess there aren't any rules. I don't know. I, I, I suspect there probably are. I would also suspect that if you asked him what his justification was for doing that, he might very well point to this passage from Mark's Gospel, where um, Jesus and his disciples are approached by the Pharisees, who are the keepers of the law and the keepers of tradition, and they're accused of not following these things, and Jesus seems to dismiss them. And, of course, the thing about Jesus is he's the Word of God. Uh, he's the Son of God. If, if, if you want to think of the law, the law is the Torah. Well, Jesus is the Torah incarnate. That's who he is. He's not going to do He fulfills the law. In fact, it's interesting if you notice, the things that um, we're told about the Pharisees are things like washing hands and cleaning uh, uh, cups and pots and beds. What, is, what does James speak about? feeding the poor, helping the homeless, taking care of the world. It's a little more substantial, right? And so I, I, heard, I think what Jesus', Jesus response to them really is, the law is important. In fact, it's fundamental. There's a great line from James in the second reading which says, we're called the humbly accepted. Jesus tells us that it's what comes out of us that makes us impure, which means the law in our faith is meant to be something which is ingrained within us. So much a part of us that rather than having a list of, okay, I got to wash my hands, I got to clean those utensils a certain way, I, I can't eat that, rather than having a list like that, there are almost things that become automatic to us. I've heard a person one time use the, uh, the uh, example of, of laws being important and how they play a, an important role. I don't, listen, I have a religion, so I don't play golf. But, um, I know some golfers, and one golfer was telling me about all the rules there are in golf, particularly the rules that, that you have to have a, a, a good golf swing. And he said, the thing is, they're hard, but if you don't follow them, you're not successful. He said, but what happens over time is you almost internalize those so much to, to such a point that they happen without thinking about it. Here's the, my experience of that. When I was in high school, the sport that I played was, was wrestling. I was a wrestler. I wasn't a good wrestler, but I was a wrestler. And if, you ever, if anyone was a wrestler, then you, you'll, you'll know that a part of what we do in practice 
is we go over moves again and again and again and again repetitively to the point where maybe it'll drive you a little crazy. And early on in my career, when I was just starting, I can remember I was wrestling this gentleman. And I remember seeing something. And for a moment, I stopped and I thought, I said, oh, I can probably do this. Well, in the process of thinking about that, I found myself flat on my back being pinned because the guy took advantage of me. Later on in my career, the same thing would happen. I didn't think. I could respond immediately because I'd internalized the rules of my sport. Well, our faith is meant to be internalized within us. You know, we're called to love not because it's a commandment, because it's become ingrained in us. It's been written in our hearts. Uh, we're called to, you know, forgive those who have hurt us because it is part of who we are. I said to my friend who died that his faith was in the marrow of his bones. It didn't get there by accident. It got there through practice and through faith and through prayer. And we're called to allow our faith to get into the marrow of our bones. We want God to help us to live almost automatically as compassionate, loving, caring, forgiving people. So we don't, we don't dismiss laws, but we're called to internalize it. As James says, humbly accept the faith that's been given to us. Live it. Practice it. Let it become part of who we are. Let it become just embedded within the very fiber of our muscles and our soul so we automatically live as the people that Christ has called us to be. So we ask this day that God will give us the spirit of humility to hear his word, to hear his commandments, the true ones, which tell us to love God and love our neighbor, to give us the humility to, to, uh, to live those things every day and allow the grace of God to embed them in the very depths of our soul so that we will live as people almost automatically who love and forgive and show kindness because it's, it's become not a command we are called to follow. It's become exactly who we truly are, Catholics, followers of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And together now, let us place our prayers and needs before our loving God. For the church that we may experience an ever deeper conversion of mind and heart as we allow God's word to instruct and free us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear for a deepening of gratitude, that we may be grateful to God for every blessing and gift and develop them fully for God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear for wisdom, that God will teach us how to live the virtues of the Christian life and manifest them in new ways in our contemporary society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For a greater knowledge of ourselves, that God will help us discern our motivations and make life-changing, life-giving choices each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the Archbishop-elect Richard Henning, 
that God guides him in his pastoral care for the people of the Archdiocese and that he ministers with sincere commitment to serving Christ in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For Ginger and Kevin Benassi, whom today's Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For all the personal intentions we now hold in the quiet of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Let us also pray for the safety of all those who will be traveling on this holiday weekend. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask you to receive all the prayers you place before you, for we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder that our second collection today is the St. Mary's Parish Monthly Collection. Our offering hymn today is number 617, Come to the Water, 617. Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for our compassion for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing them of your glories without end. We are playing. Font of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity of the coming of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter into my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Our communion song today, number 328, Bread of Life, 328.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. It's just we've been announcing that we have the, uh, the second annual um, St. Mary's dinner, dance, auction, fundraiser. Uh, it's on the 20th of September. It was a great time last year. We're selling tickets right now. It also raises money for the church. We have some great things to auction off. 
I don't know. I assume someone's out there selling tickets right now. If they are, buy them. They're $40 a ticket. They're going quickly, but we'd like to sell it out. If they're not there, because I haven't been out there, I don't know who's there. Uh, I have blind faith that someone's there. If not, you can always just call the office and you can buy them from the office. But if you haven't gone before, think about going. If you've gone before and you haven't bought a ticket yet, please buy a ticket. You know, I just said before we go, one story I'll tell you uh, that about happened today. Uh, Deacon Paul said to me earlier, I have a great life. You know, a lot of interesting things happen. We had a wedding here today, and it was a beautiful, great young couple. And, and uh, I was heading down to a reception on the way to the, to, before the wedding, so I put these units on. And the reception I went to was at the 1620 Hotel in Plymouth. It was for a couple that was celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary, 70 years. They danced at the reception. It was great. And their first, uh, they're, they're St. Joseph's people, but their first date in 1953 was stationed at the cross at St. Mary's Church. And so as I'm with them, watching them getting some presentation, I look out into the lobby, and it wasn't my wedding. There was a beautiful young bride in a full wedding gown with her whole wedding party get ready to go out the door. And so I ran up to her, and I said, I said congratulations. I said, that couple celebrating 70 years. And she got almost emotional. She said, I'm going to pray for them. And so then I told the couple, and they prayed for the couple. So I, at my wedding, I told the couple, hey, you do this right, we'll all come back and do your 70th anniversary in a couple in a few years. So, so it's just a wonderful thing to see the beginning and the end. And both, at the beginning and the end, we're so, just so very happy and in love. It's wonderful to see that living sacrament that brings God's life and his love into our lives. So, so keep all those married couples young and very old. The groom's 99 years old and the other one. Keep them in your prayers. And they, are, they already booked a room for the, his 90, for his 100th birthday. They're, they're optimists. So. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn together today, number 745, America the Beautiful, 745. <laughs> skies for amber waves of green for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain America America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea oh beautiful for pilgrim feet who stir